Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. Much of the coverage of the Boston Marathon bombing looked familiar, especially the rush to misjudgment. There were early reports about a Saudi person of interest, courtesy of so-called terrorism expert Stephen Emerson, who took credit for getting the false story first. On the Facebook page of the person of interest, there were in interesting entries that showed an animus toward the United States. Again, he has not been convicted, but the burns on his, uh, on his uh, skin match the explosive residue of the bomb that exploded. Is this the Saudi national or are those two different people? Uh, the Saudi national. The person in question was a victim but was treated more like a suspect. Across the media, many minds turned almost immediately to Islamic terrorism, absent any evidence. The pressure cooker bombs we learned from the Daily Beast and others were an Al-Qaeda technique, never mind that they've been around since the 1970s. The bombs were packed with ball bearings, which, according to some, including the aforementioned Stephen Emerson, was a jihadist hallmark. CNN spent an hour or so er erroneously reporting that a dark-skinned male had been apprehended. The New York Post ran a cover photo of two young men who had nothing to do with the bombing. And when the FBI released photos of the suspects, MSNBC host Chris Matthews was left to ponder the possibilities of ethnic profiling. Uh, to be blunt and not to be into political profiling or racial profiling, but when you look at a picture like we're looking at now, are there people in the FBI, in the investigative world, that can look at that picture, study it ethnographically, and figure out what the odds are on a, on a fellow like that being from different parts of the world, say Yemen or any place like that? Can they figure that out by looking at a picture? Now, while many seemed eager to push the story into a particular direction, the assumption from the start was that the bombings were an act of terrorism, well before the facts could tell us very much. The front page of USA Today on April 16th communicated that idea, and it was common elsewhere, that the country's post-9-11 terrorism quiet was over. But that raises some important questions about how attacks are categorized. As USA Today itself reported in 2012, mass slayings are alarmingly common in the United States. And even assuming that the Boston slaughter was politically motivated, and therefore terrorism, it's still far from unique in post-September 11th America. Among the list of incidents, the anthrax letters which killed five in 2001, the murder of two at a Knoxville Unitarian Church in 2008, shootings that targeted liberals, the assassination next, the next year of abortion provider George Tiller, and the killing of six at a Sikh temple in Wisconsin just last August. The fact that journalists fail to recognize that political violence has been a part of the United States landscape in recent years is a testament not to short memories, but to a very narrow definition that seems to dismiss right-wing domestic violence as not really terrorism. And finally, for good or ill, one staple of TV news is the left-right debate. But it's less of a debate when the participants agree. That was the story on PBS's NewsHour on April 12th. The debate was about the White House's plan to cut Social Security by switching to a different measure of inflation. First, from the right, here was David Brooks. I give him credit for some things. He, he did have some reasonably small Social Security reform, this thing called chain CPI, which is part of benefit cut, part of big tax increase. So he does do some things which are brave. He does, I think, generally sort of move to the center. And apparently from the left, Mark Shields, he had this to say about Barack Obama. I, I think what he did uh, was, uh, was gutsy. Anytime you make your own base that angry, as he obviously has done, so I, I, I think I think he uh, I think he gets uh, credit and should get credit for uh, for doing something bold and difficult. Yes, even on PBS, the left and right agree. Cutting Social Security is brave. The public, as you might know, is overwhelmingly opposed to this idea. We are apparently not so brave. This is Peter Hart. This was Fair TV. Thanks for tuning in.